It's got a 12 meg. Uh, can't say megapixel for my life. 12 meg. 12 meg. 12 megapixel. 12 meg. What's good, everybody? This is Papita. I'm one half of the Pixel Boys, and I just got the Google Pixel 2 XL. I got the black version. I know the pan one is the most popular, but I don't regret my purchase. This phone starts at $849 for the 64 gigabyte version. You can see the front of the box here. The back is 16 pixel, real simple like that. Nice clean box. Google did a good job with this. So if you looked online for the specs, you know that, that this phone doesn't really sound all that interesting. It's got a Snapdragon 835 processor, four gigs of RAM, but Google never really meant for this phone to be all that interesting on the hardware side of things. They were focusing more on the software side of things, AI, artificial intelligence, things like that. But the most notable thing about this phone is that it's supposed to have one of the best cameras around. It's got a DxO Mars score of 98. It's got a 12 megapixel camera, laser autofocus. It's got a flash, you know, the usual things. But what really matters is that the whole photo taking process is supposed to be completely powered by AR. The Pixel is looking at each and every photo, adjusting the colors, and, and it's a lot to, to take in. We'll take a look at that in a separate video. But for now, we're gonna unbox the Google Pixel 2 XL. So once again, here we got the box, nice and clean. Good job, Google, good job. So let's just slide it up. And right off the bat, you see the main events, the Google Pixel 2 XL. Just pop this out of the way. See what's under here, and here you got some books that nobody reads. You got a USB C to USB A adapter, your charging brick, your USB C cable, and oh, this isn't a good sign a headphone adapter. And that's it, this is everything that comes out of the box. So let's just clean a table like, like that, and let's quickly explore this phone. Ooh, take a look at this. Doesn't this phone look so badass? So here we have the Google Pixel 2 XL. Take a quick look, here there's the front, there you have your front facing camera, eight megapixels. The bottom just has a USB-C port. You got your power and volume rocker on the right side. At the top you have a noise canceling microphone. And at the side you have your SIM card tray. In the back you have your, ooh, oh wow. This thing is already collecting fingerprints already. Ooh. That's not good. In the back you have your 12 megapixel camera with flash, fingerprint sensor, and good old Google logo. Cute. So let's just get things started. Let's power this phone on. Vibrate. So as you can see here, you got Google's new way of setting up your phone. You gotta connect both your old phone or an iPhone and this phone together and it'll transfer the data through the cable. But I'm recording on my phone right now. I'm using the Nest 66P. So I'm just gonna go into it really quick, plug it right in while I'm still recording. And just like that, all your data gets copied over to this phone with this cool little animation, if I do say so myself. Now, I did neglect to mention that this phone does not have a headphone jack, so you'll either have to use that headphone adapter to listen to your music, except that means that you can charge your phone at the same time, so you better make sure that your phone battery is not too low, or you could pair a pair of Bluetooth headphones of course, that does mean that you have yet another thing that you have to charge. So no matter what, it's a lose-lose situation right there. So like I said, this phone has this fingerprint sensor on the back. We're about to see how fast it is. There it is right there. And that was quick. So while I'm setting up this phone, I know a lot of people are complaining about the screen, how the screen is too blue or something like that and how the viewing angles are not that great. But to me, the screen looks fine. Now, I do want to mention one feature specific to this phone. You could squeeze the bottom half of this phone to access your assistant just like that. So now you got three ways to access your assistant. That way, holding the home button, and also saying, okay, Google. Hi. Just I'm like that. Google okay, Google. Do you love me? Yes, in an at your service sort of way. Okay, Google. I'm breaking up with you. Sorry, I don't understand. You will never understand. So like some of the newer phones, this phone has an 18 by nine aspect ratio, which makes it a lot taller, which I guess is always better than simply making it bigger so that you can still type on a keyboard. Let's try this out. Hello there. See, easy. So back to the home screen, you can see they moved the Google search bar at the bottom, making it easy to reach, given the how tall this phone is. At the top, there is now a date and a weather display, and it'll also show you your next appointment underneath. And as you can see, there are no appointments, so I'm completely free. Woohoo! So really quick, let's explore the new features of Android 8.0 Oreo. Let's start with picture-in-picture. Picture. All you gotta do is open up the YouTube app, 
subscribe to Pizzle Boys, of course. And let's just, sure, let's play them at the end of auto. There you go, now you have them in the auto playing. All you gotta do now is press the home button and just like that, you can play the video wherever you want. Open any other app, also open a calculator, just do some calculations, yada yada. And the video continues playing right there. And if you wanna stop the video, just tap it, hit this X right there, and voila. The video is gone. But that's just one way to multitask on Android or if you open a one app, hold the multi-window button, open another app, and now you're using two apps. So now you can watch them in the bottle in split screen mode while you're doing calculations and whatever you're doing. You can also see that Google switched to a white theme for the notifications and the quick settings, which blinds your eyes. Let's get that away. So as I said, it's got a Snapdragon 835 processor, four gigs of RAM, but Google doesn't want you to focus on all that stuff. Google instead wants you to focus on AI and the fact that you get free full resolution photo backups for three years. How cool is that? Now the other thing specific to this device has to be their new wallpapers. Let's take a look at them. So at their keynote, Google was advertising their living universe wallpapers. Let's see here, let's choose this one. And you can see it just looks like a regular wallpaper, but if you look closely, you can see the waves crashing through the shore. This one, you could see parachutes flying across the land and everything. It's a little hard to see here, but you see them, see them? And those are their new wallpapers. Cool looking stuff. Let's see this one. The pattern is ever so slowly moving. They're not in your face. So I'm probably gonna, let's go with this one. So you got a cool little camera pan as you swipe across the home screen. By the way, if you wanted to see what apps I use, then here's your very, very quick look. The reason they're great like this is because they're still being set up and installed. Now here you see the pixels always on display. I'm not sure if the Pixel has an LED notification light yet, so I think I'm gonna keep this feature turned off for now. However, one thing that Google did advertise is the fact that if you have music playing nearby, then it'll actually show you what song it is down here because it is always listening to music, just like how it's always listening to your voice, which is pretty cool because usually for me personally, by the time I'm done saying, okay, Google, what song is this? The music has already ended and it would have already been too late to know what song that is. So this feature works offline. It doesn't send any data to Google. It keeps a small database of about a thousand songs offline. So there is a chance that I won't recognize your music but it's a cool feature nonetheless. So like I mentioned before, the screen is an 18 by nine aspect ratio, 1440p resolution. The colors look just fine, I guess, but in combination with the front facing stereo speakers, which get pretty loud, and it even has a little bit of bass, if I do say so myself, I could definitely see myself using this phone to watch TV shows or even full on movies on this thing. Now, one great aspect about this phone is that it has IP67 dust and water resistance, which was a big complaint with the previous Pixel. So you can dunk it in a bowl of water for about maybe 30 minutes, but I wouldn't recommend jumping into a pool with this thing in your pocket. So yeah. So I think that's just about everything I have to show you. I've used this phone only for a couple of minutes and so far it hasn't shown any sign of slowdown or hitching or anything like that. Look at that. Ooh, whoa, whoa. Man, this is SSP would definitely struggle to do this. There's not a single hint of lag whatsoever. You can definitely expect this phone to just muscle through anything, especially games. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stop now. So that's the end of this video. Like I said, I'm gonna make a separate video testing the camera and the video recording. Check out the slow motion effects, the portrait effects, and all that great stuff. So I think this is just about the end of this video. So if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, share this with your friends, especially the ones who might want this phone. Once again, this is Papita. I'm one half of the Pixel Boys. Peace out. Pixel Boys, Google Pixel. 100% coincidence.